Hey, this is Tamara with Real TV Films. We're here at AFI Dallas. And the next film we're going to be talking about is called IOUSA. We have Patrick Creedon. Welcome to the set here. Thanks for having me. It's good tell, to be here. Tell us about your film, IOUSA. Well, our film is a documentary, and it's about the state of the American economy. And um, unfortunately, it's, it's, not, it's not a happy story. Um, our country is, in, is facing some very severe financial challenges. And the situation is only going to get worse in the years ahead if we don't. That our financial condition is worse than advertised, uh, that we need to act, we need to act soon because time is working against us. America faces four serious deficits today. The first is a budget deficit. The second is a savings deficit. The third is a balance of payments deficit, of which the trade deficit is a subset. And the fourth and most serious of all, is a leadership deficit. And I understand that creating this film, you knew that this was going to be an election year, so you wanted to make a film, a message film, about the issue. Yeah, it, absolutely. We, we started the film about a year and a half ago. And uh, at the time, the American economy was, was fine. And people said, boy, what a bad topic for a documentary. Um, unfortunately, a year and a half later, um, it is, we are in the middle of an election year, and we are in the middle of a very severe financial crisis. IOUSA takes a very complex story, a very sophisticated story, and boils it down into, into bite-sized nuggets so that a general audience can understand better what's going on in the world around us. How big is the federal debt? I don't know. I'm guessing quite a bit. I have no idea. Like three million? I know it's in the billions. Trillions? Billions? Somewhere a little over uh, about a trillion, trillion and a half somewhere in there. I know it's a heck of a lot more than it was probably 10 years ago. Take a stab at it. 69 billion? It's probably huge. What if I told you it was 8.7 trillion dollars? <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Wow. That's shouldn't be that way. So is this your typical kind of film that you normally make? Well, you know, I've been a documentary filmmaker for a long time. Um, the last film we made was a movie called Wordplay. It was about crossword puzzles. And um, people said, wow, what a, what a bad topic. <laughs> and uh, You're Mr. Bad Topic <laughs> Film Guy, <yeah>. right? <laughs> My wife and I go for the real go for the real explosive sort of zinger. The things that nobody else wants to touch. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Somebody's yeah. going to do it, right? <laughs> and, um, and Wordplay ended up being just terrific. We had a great time with it. The film did very well. Um, and uh, it ran in theaters all throughout the summer of 2006. It was very successful. Um, we wanted to do something after wordplay that was different and that was very challenging. And, and that's what we found when we chose this topic. Speaking of challenging, was your road to AFI challenging? Have you been in other film festivals? Um, we were at the Sundance Film Festival in January. Um, but this is, has been our first stop since then. Um, AFI Dallas is a very, very special place for me because uh, I'm a graduate from the American Film Institute. Uh, I, I studied cinematography when, when I was there in, in the mid-90s. And uh, so coming back here as a filmmaker now feels kind of like I'm completing that loop. I, I learned a lot of very important things at AFI, but the most important thing I learned was storytelling and how important that is. And it doesn't matter how fancy your camera is or how cool your microphones are. Uh, if you have a bad story or you don't know how to tell a story well, you're, you're going to have a bad film. Yeah, I mean, our story is, um, like I said, our last film was, was really funny and very, very entertaining. Um, and it was appealing in that sense. So what do people walk away from your film knowing or saying? From IOUSA? Um, people walk away saying a lot of things. But I'd say the biggest thing they say is, that that wasn't nearly as complicated as I thought it was going to be. You know, it wasn't nearly as painful as I thought it might mm -hmm. be to see this film about this topic. And they've been very grateful. Um, people want to know, the, the American people, the American public, are a very intelligent group of people. Unfortunately, there's so much, there's so much clutter out there in the news and media space that it's hard to find stories like the one we're look at, at things 20 or 30 years from now and say, this can't happen. Something will change because the debt is just too big. There's only one person who has the bully pulpit who can take this issue to the people, and that is the president 
of the United States. And what would you say that the presidential candidates would say if they were to see your film? Um, yeah, it's a good question. We, we, um, we, we'd like them all to see the film. Um, there's some very, very important members of Congress that are in the film. There's several former Treasury secretaries that are in the film. Um, these are people who know this story firsthand. They are all very, very concerned. I, I should mention Warren Buffett is in our film as well. We, we talk to people who know this story inside and out. They are all concerned about where we're heading as a country. In the last few decades, but accentuating in the last six or eight years, uh, this country has started uh, consuming considerably more than it produces. In other words, it's, it's relied on the labor of others to provide things that we use day by day. Because we're so rich, we can do it for a long time and we can do it on a large scale, but we can't do it forever. Eventually you run out. I mean, it's like a credit card. Uh, my credit's pretty good at the moment. And uh, if I want to go out and quit working and have no income coming in, but keep spending, I can, first of all, sell off the assets I have, and then after that, I can start borrowing on my credit card, and if I've got a good reputation, I can do that for quite a while. But at some point, I max out, and uh, at that point, uh, I have to start producing a whole lot more than I consume in order to clean up my debts. In this country, we have seen imports uh, increase from 5% of GDP to, what, 17% or so of GDP in the last 35 or so years, and yet we have 4.5% unemployment and we have a very, very prosperous country. So it's a good thing for us. What is not good is the imbalance between imports and, and exports. The rest of the world is buying more and more of our goods all the time, but we're buying it at, at an even greater rate. We're buying more and more of theirs. That's not good. But more trade overall is good as long as it's true trade. If it's pseudo trade, where we're buying but not selling, I do not think that's good over time. The problem is, if you're going to try to fix this problem, if you're going to try to fix this financial problem that we have today, the solution lies somewhere in either raising taxes or lowering federal spending. That is not a very popular platform to run on. If you've noticed, what you're hearing nowadays from the candidates, the people on the right talk about more and more tax cuts or keeping taxes low, which is, which is fine. That's not necessarily a bad thing. And people on the left are talking about expanding entitlement programs, especially health care. That's a very expensive uh, proposition. Right. So you have people on the right talking about a federal government that's at this level, and people on the left are talking about a bigger federal government, expansion of the federal government, which is up, up at this level. Any first grader can tell you these numbers don't add up. That's what we tried to tell in our, in our story. We, we tried to make it simple because at the end of the day it is simple. There's that old saying, there's no free lunch. Whether you're an individual or whether you are national, you're a national economy or, an, or a federal government, there's no free lunch. And we've been living, we've been living our lives uh, for the past several years as though there's no tomorrow. Well, there is a tomorrow. And if we don't get our act together, our kids and our grandkids are going to have a financial mess on their hands. All right. And one of the solutions to that problem is see your film, IOUSA. Thanks, Patrick Creeden. This is Tamara Henry with Real TV Films.